Hello, this is Jennifer with Science Buddies, and in this video we'll be exploring how to make your own light-up unicorn horn. These are all the materials you will need for this project. For a complete materials list, visit the link in the video description. Before beginning work, make sure to print out the activity template linked in the description box. Make sure you have the Arduino IDE installed on your computer. If this is your first time using an Arduino, see the Science Buddies Getting Started with the Arduino post, which can also be found in the description box. Part 1. Setting up the circuit First, let's build your circuit. Connect your RGB LED to your Tiny Lily mini processor. The positive pin should go to the positive pin on the LED board, which is represented by a plus sign, the negative pin to the minus pin, and the pin 1 on the Tiny Lily should go to the arrow pointing into the LED board, also known as an input pin, on the RGB LED. To connect everything, use your jumper wires. Snap off the male breakaway header pins with your hands or needle nose pliers. You can use these to secure the female to board connections like so. Now let's launch the Arduino IDE. Connect your Tiny Lily Mini processor board to the computer using the Tiny Lily Mini USB adapter and micro USB cable. Once connected, go to the top bar, select Tools, then Board. In the drop down menu, select Arduino Pro or Pro Mini. Next, go to the tools, then processor. Select at mega 328p, 3.3 volts, 8 megahertz. This option will not appear until you have selected Arduino Pro or Pro Mini for the board. Finally, it's time to select your port. This should be COM followed by a series of numbers and it will be different for you if you have a Mac. If you have a Mac, it would be this followed by a series of numbers. Download rgbled.ino and open it in the Arduino IDE. You should also download and install the Fast LED library. To do so, navigate to the top bar and click Tools, Manage Libraries, and from here, search for Fast LED. The first option should be what you should install. Now, upload the code onto your Tiny Lily mini processor. You should see the LED light up and cycle through the colors of the rainbow. If not, double check your wires to make sure they are in the correct pins. Also, make sure they are not too loose. Now switch your USB adapter with your battery adapter and power the Tiny Lily mini processor with a LiPo battery. The circuit should perform the same. If it doesn't, double check to make sure that the LiPo battery is fully charged. Now that everything is working, we're going to take the circuit apart for now. Part 2. Preparing your horn. We will be making a unicorn horn as an example in this video, but you could also attach your RGB LED to another item or article of clothing. From your printed activity template, cut out the shapes roughly. Using double-sided tape or rolled up one-sided tape, tape the shapes to the felt sheet that you want to use for the horn. I'll be using blue. Cut out the shapes from the felt. You will only need your horn pieces and your A piece for now. Once the shapes are cut out, lay the tiny lily face down on felt piece A, with the writing facing down. Use a marker to label the plus and minus holes and pin one. You can briefly flip the board over to check the labels if you need to, but be careful not to get the holes mixed up when you place it face down again. Hot glue your tiny lily mini processor down onto the felt piece. Next, you will prepare connections to your RGB LED. Note that in some sewable circuit projects, you can use conductive thread for all the connections. However, in this project, you will use regular jumper wires for two of the connections because that makes it easier to avoid short circuits in the narrow tip of the unicorn horn. Alternatively, you could use conductive thread for all of the connections if you cover the thread in an insulating material like tape or fabric paint. You will need two of your male headers and a pair of scissors. Remove the metal pins from the plastic by pinching the black pieces between your fingers and pulling the metal piece with your scissors. You can also use needle nose pliers like I did here. You should be left with these small black pieces with holes. This plastic part is exactly what you need. Thread your two jumper wires of different colors through your positive and negative pins on your RGB LED, from the flat side to the LED side. The long metal pieces should stick out past your LED and sit flush against the flat side of the RGB LED. Note which jumper wire color corresponds to which pin. In this case, the red jumper wire corresponds to the positive pin on the RGB LED while the brown jumper wire corresponds to the negative pin. Cap both metal wires with the two black plastic pieces from the previous step. Thread them all the way through. You can use a dab of hot glue on the ends to fully secure the wires. Now set this aside. 
Part 3. Making the horn. Take your horn cutout piece, and this should be a layer of paper taped onto a layer of felt, and fold it in half vertically down the middle. You should be sewing through two pieces of felt and two pieces of paper, like the diagram. To help you keep the pieces together, you can use a little bit of tape. Make sure you are not embroidering through tape. This will make later steps much more difficult. Sew using a thread similar to your felt color. In this demonstration, I'll be using a thread color contrasting with the felt piece. Sew the pieces together along the dotted line using the double threaded backstitch. You can see the link in the description for more information on how to do this stitch. If you run out of thread, remember to leave about 2 inches so you can easily tie the end, and then just grab a new piece of thread and continue the stitches. Once you are done with the stitches, carefully rip off the paper layer. Your stitches should hold strong enough for your paper to easily come off. If not, wet the paper around the stitches to make the paper easier to remove. Once the paper is removed, glue down your embroidery stitches with a little bit of hot glue on both sides. Wait for the glue to cool. Once the glue is cooled, invert or turn your unicorn horn inside out. If it is difficult to get the narrower part of the horn to invert, you can use a pen to help push it through. Thread your jumper wires connected to your RGB LED through the small hole at the top of your horn. If the hole at the top is too small, cut a little bit of felt off the top so that the hole is a little bigger. Once the jumper wires are threaded through the horn, carefully stuff your unicorn horn with stuffing or cotton balls. Take a little bit of stuffing at a time and poke it into your horn using your pen. Stuff until there's about a half an inch of room at the bottom of the horn free of stuffing. After this, trim felt piece A so that it is slightly smaller than the bottom of your horn opening. Okay, on your A piece, stab the male headers through the felt piece and through the positive and negative pins on the Tiny Lily mini processor. So you have two male headers that go through. One goes through positive and one goes through negative. And then connect the female leads on the jumper wires uh, to the long metal pieces that are through both the Tiny Lily mini processor as well as the felt. So these jumper wires are connected to the RGB LED which is on the other side of the unicorn horn. Push the A piece into the unicorn horn base so that the tiny lily mini processor is facing outwards. Firmly fold the flaps around the base onto the A piece. Hot glue the flaps onto the felt piece. Now it is time to connect pin 1 on the tiny lily to the input pin on the RGB LED. Prepare the needle and the conductive thread. Stitch in a spiral pattern around the horn from the LED down to the tiny lily using a double threaded backstitch. When stitching it to the bottom of the horn at pin 1, make sure to not touch the positive or negative pins on the Tiny Lily mini processor. When stitching it, you can loop your conductive thread through the pinhole twice to ensure the connection. Tie a knot and trim any excess thread. Now with normal thread, not conductive thread, firmly stitch felt piece A to the horn. This stitch uses a double threaded whip stitch. See link below for tutorial. Finally, connect your LiPo battery using the battery adapter. Your LED should be working and changing colors, and this should confirm that your circuit is working. Part 4. Finalizing your horn. For now, you can unplug your battery to conserve energy. To finish your unicorn horn, trace the bottom of your final horn onto the paper side of felt piece B. Trim down the felt so that it is slightly bigger than the trace shape. Remove the guiding paper piece. Cut a piece of ribbon approximately 3 feet long and hot glue the midpoint onto piece B. Remember to plug your LiPo battery back in. You can place hawker around the edges of the bottom circle piece. You should leave a gap in your glue so that you can remove the LiPo battery later if you would like. Now hawk glue the bottom of the unicorn horn onto the felt piece B so that the ribbon side is facing up. Now it's time to decorate. Trim any excess threads flying around. You can always hide the seams of the unicorn horn with ribbon as well. To wear a unicorn horn, Place the horn gently on your head and wrap the ribbon around the back of your ears and under your head. Tie firmly. This is better done with some assistance. Your unicorn horn is now complete. For more crafty DIY projects and thousands of other fun hands-on science and engineering projects, visit us online at www.sciencebuddies.org.